Hello, GFWC Florida. We're back and we're so excited tonight to go ahead and just share a little bit about our projects, the Book Heroes Project and Smiles Across the Miles. But before we go into that, we have special guests with us tonight. We have uh, Trisha with us, who's going to uh, be the outgoing uh, director of junior clubs for GFWC. And many of you remember, she did join us when we had our Saddle Up for Smiles and she came and joined us in Florida and celebrated with us. So we wanted to invite Trisha just to come and just uh, share a little bit with us. And I said I was jealous because she was at the beach and um, our beach has just opened up here in Florida. So I'm, she's at some secret hideaway. So Trisha, we wanna welcome you. And if you'll just say a few things to GFWC Florida and their members, welcome. Yes, welcome, thank Trisha. you. Thank you so much. Well, Hello, GFWC Florida again. I did have a wonderful time when I was there with you. And I did, I, I thought, you know, since we're using technology to um, pay a little homage to being in Florida with my backdrop. <laughs> Very nice. Very so, nice. Fun. But I am glad to be here and be with um, all of you and share this fun time with GFWC Florida um, to wrap up the rest of your accomplishments. And it's just been an amazing administration. And I'm very proud of of what we've all done and especially GFWC Florida, all your accomplishments. I love seeing all of your projects come across through Facebook, social media, so, um, and newsletters. So it's very fun. Well, thanks. We know we had a good time with you when you came and spent the weekend with us. And um, I hope going forward, either know you're not gonna be in the same position that you know that GFWC Florida, we'd be glad to have you at any time because we had such a great time uh, dancing and going to all the districts and just celebrating the accomplishments of um, our fabulous junior clubs because they do work extra hard and I know um, Shannon has worked so closely with you and the other junior directors and we're just grateful for her leadership and thankful to you for um, being her boss oh. and um, we're, we're um, just very very proud of Shannon and of you so um, we just wanted to give you a little chance to come in and talk to us well thank you yes very proud of Shannon I just you know the really fun part was a couple times when I was at GFWC headquarters some of the books came in um, you know in the mail from a lot of it I think from Shannon promoting along the way so um, that was kind of pretty exciting for me to get to say, oh, these are juniors books coming into headquarters for Madam President to distribute out um, to the DC schools. And I did get to do that once. So that was really fun as well um, to know that, you know, they came from Florida juniors, from juniors all over. So right. neat. All right. And Trisha, I'm so glad that, uh, you know, moving forward into the next administration that you were going to be on the board of directors as well with me and Sharon, and so uh, we'll get to hang out a little bit yeah, at, uh, well, at GFWC fun. Florida events. So thank you so much for being such a fantastic director, and thank you so much yeah. for making the time to come and be with us um, last year at Fall Board. It was so fun to show you Florida, and of course your, um, your aide uh, yeah. is a very wonderful Dara Bergdahl, who is one of my Absolutely. mentors and advisors as well, and so it was so fun being at GFWC board events and also having Dara there. Yeah, Dara's Dara there the too. Best. You chose like wisely, my yeah, friend. she's the best ever. So <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that GFWC Florida would share her with me um, yes. for these Just two barely. Years. So, yeah, just, just barely. Just a little bit. I had to yeah. share her back sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, Trisha, thank, thank you so much for all of your work and for all of the executive committee. We, uh, Mary, our international president, Mary Ellen Brock, was not able to be with us this evening. Uh, but I know that just like in GFWC Florida and how all the other states have been trying to figure out what to do uh, with these unprecedented times. I know that the executive committee has spent countless hours yes. uh, conferencing. And um, I know that when y'all made the difficult decision about GFWC Florida convention, we all completely understood because we've all made those decisions That's in our state as well. well. So I know that you're continuing to work hard to figure out what's going on with um, how we can um, and this administration and begin the next one. And so thank you for your continued work. I know that uh, director of junior clubs uh, for GFWC is not, uh, is not just one job, um, but yeah. several jobs. And um, <laughs> thank you for well, representing you. all juniors on the, um, on the GFWC executive committee. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you yeah. so much for both of your representation and, and all your hard work and it's really appreciated. And um, it's really amazing when we put all of our efforts together and, 
and right now we just have to be stronger together and get through this crazy time and, and yeah. we'll be on to the better things next. So yeah. yeah. Well, Absolutely. we know that um, you and Mary Ellen have worked closely together and you're a great team. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're glad to be a part of that administration and serve alongside of you. So we thank you for your leadership. Thank Mary Ellen for her leadership. And uh, we know that um, this has been a learning experience for all of us. We've all learned a lot of things about ourselves and about what we do and why we volunteer. Even though we're stuck at home, we still manage to do things. And I know that you and Mary Ellen have communicated with us at every step of the way, and we're grateful for that and um, thankful. And yeah. we know that um, it'll be okay. We'll all get together again soon as you all had to make the decisions as we did to do what's best for all of us. So Absolutely. thank you for that. And um, we appreciate your friendship. And oh, thank, uh, you. thank and, you. And uh, I look forward to when you can be somewhere warm. Yeah, yeah, where I can really be on the beach or somewhere warm because it's only 45 yes. degrees here today. <laughs> Well, we're, oh, we're, Illinois, bless oh, your heart. <laughs> we're yeah, we're double that here. We were like 85 oh, today. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're all we're already hotter than the hinges of Hades. <laughs> so that's the way it is. So, Trisha, thanks. We love thanks, you. Trisha. We hope to see you. Love you both. See you in person yep, soon. Bye. 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 Take care. Yep. You too. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Okay, it was so great to see Tricia, and um, I just wish Mary Ellen could join us, but she is the international president, so she has a lot of things going on. So um, we did invite her to come in, but we wanna go ahead and just share some of the totals that GFWC Florida did under the seven grand initiatives that was introduced to us at the beginning of this administration. So um, these are just Florida totals that I can tell you that we did for 2019. So um, I'll go through the list and then this information will be put on the website. So if you don't get a chance to write it down, it's okay because I have a lot to share with you. We will share this information with you. So GFWC Florida in 2019 planted 3,502 trees for Arbor Day. 50 projects were done by clubs for women in the military. 5,001 pairs of shoes were donated. <laughs> For Souls for Souls, the Nike Reuse a Shoe program. 1,078 Dr. Seuss books were donated to inner city programs. 253 Dr. Seuss books were mailed to GFWC to distribute in Washington, D.C. for inner city programs. 42 programs were done on Martin Luther King Day. 791 calls, emails, or letters were done wow. on September 23rd, urging the passing of Miranda's Law plus an additional 100 phone calls were done not on September 23rd. So we really let our legislators know that it was serious. 750 calls, emails, or letters were done in the urging of the passing of the 3D Gun Safety Act, plus an additional 85 calls were done on, a, on different days. 105 clubs or state projects have been planned already for the 100th anniversary for the women's right to vote. So that's wow. pretty exciting that we already have 105 events planned as of January of 2019. 114 GFWC Florida clubs donated funds for the Turning Point Suffrage Memorial that we mailed the funds off to them. And um, I know right now they have stopped the work on the, the memorial, but they'll be picking that back up. So our donation was actually to get our name put on the wall at the memorial. 272 members signed up for the Legislative Action Center, and that is Kelly Holmes, her direction as our legisl legislation and public policy chairman with our main man Jennings, and I know all of you get those legislative alerts that come out. GFWC Florida joined the Million Dollar Club along with other members that were presented with their million dollar pin, and uh, I know that those funds were to help assist with our headquarters. Um, GFWC Florida also um, had a resolution that went on the books for the Florida legislators, which was for May Man Jennings to be admitted to the Women's um, History Hall of Flame in Florida. So we have a lot to be proud of. Mm -hmm. And the seven grand initiatives were so fun because we all could be um, a part of something. And it didn't matter if it was making a phone call, writing a letter, actually doing a project. And I know up in District 2 with the hurricane and the storm that came through, how amazing that Florida has planted over 3,500 trees 
um, you know, to, um, to help our environment. So we're just grateful for all of that, GFWC Florida. And that's your reporting numbers. That's numbers that you've actually put out there for the seven grand initiatives. So Shannon, I think that um, you're up next with some of your, your reports. Mm -hmm. So the uh, final category awards uh, for, for juniors are the direct director's project awards. And so these are specifically um, book heroes projects uh, for juniors reporting. So we had overall winners in juniors for education where you reported book heroes, but then um, we also did judging just for what you reported that you did uh, for book heroes. So in category one, first place is GFWC Pasco Junior Women's Club. Category two, first place is GFWC New Tampa Junior Women's Club. And category three, first place is GFWC St. Petersburg Junior Women's Club. And we had a Yay. number of clubs, uh, every, every junior club that reported had done something with Book Heroes. So um, thank you so much for that. We really appreciate it. Um, and thank you to the many, many dozens of women's clubs um, who did Book Heroes projects as well. Um, yes. Paula Lou uh, Maples, I want to uh, thank her for uh, an amazing job of championing Book Heroes as education chair and um, just really uh, being very passionate about it. I know Juniorettes Clubs did Book Heroes projects as well. Um, my own club, St. Pete Juniors, our St. Pete Juniorettes, we got together a couple times with them and, and went through books and um, I had seven Juniorettes all over my living room one day and we were sorting <laughs> books and taking stickers off of donated books and really having fun with that. So all levels of membership. We really, really um, appreciate that. Thank you. So two things uh, that have come from um, some of the funds donated for Book Heroes. My project was not about um, fundraising. I really wanted the fundraising emphasis to be able to be for Sharon's project, Operation Smile. We really wanted to put the books to be a hands-on project, but uh, Sharon was kind enough to, um, the executive committee was kind enough to allow Book Heroes to be on the remittance form. And so we did end up getting a few thousand dollars in for Book Heroes. And of course the, that belongs to everyone. So thank you for that. So I've got a couple fun things to um, to announce, and I'm going to turn off my cool background right now so that I can show you something even cooler. So bear even with me cooler, just a second. Even, even cooler, just I'm bear with me just a second here. So I've got my bear, book heroes cape. You on. said bear Let's with see. me, and there's a bear in the background. And there's a bear. <laughs> that is my District 14 book heroes bear. Yeah, I've got Yay. My cape. And then I've got my District 14 oh. book heroes. Yes, bear. yes. So I am really, really excited, y'all. This is a little tiny library, and it's not leaning. I think my laptop must be leaning a little bit. Yeah. So let me show you that first time. Oh, there it comes. We're having trouble hearing you, Miss Shannon. Okay, I'll turn that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Little free library. Now okay. we hear you. Okay. Yeah. Great. You're back. Okay. So with some of the money donated, I wanted it all to go back to clubs. Um, so. We have eight little free libraries, just Yay! like this one, that are being constructed by a carpenter. His name is Chris. I uh, found him on Etsy, and he lives in the middle of nowhere, Indiana, which I know very well because my in-laws live in the middle of nowhere, Indiana. <laughs> and he, um, is, uh, he is constructing eight of these little free libraries Yay! for us. And they come, here's the wonderful thing, they come assembled just like this. The best. So he sent the me best. one so that I could show it to y'all. Um, you can also see it's got a base. The base is assembled as well, and it even comes with the screws. So all a club needs to do to put up this little free library is a 4x4 four four post. You just need a 4x4 four four post and a safe place to put it. So this is what we're going to do. Um, we have eight little free libraries available from the funding. Uh, so I'm going to have a form on the website that you'll be able to see as soon as you see this. Um, and any club that is able to put a little free library and willing to put one up and willing to keep it stocked, Yay. you can send in one of those forms. You're gonna have about 10 days to send it in. Um, and then I will draw eight clubs from all the forms that get sent in. And I will deliver the little free library to the club that's closest to me since I have this one. And for the, uh, for the other ones, is this on my screen? I'm still talking on my screen. I'm so sorry. It's probably going to show up the whole way. Um, for, the, uh, for the other seven clubs, I'm going to use the information on the form, and Chris is going to send the Little Free Library directly to you. So all over Florida, That's you won't awesome. have to worry about pickup. They'll be sent directly to you, and um, you'll be able to install the Little Free Libraries. 
Then the other thing that we've done with the money raised for Book Heroes is the books that you see in the Little Free Library are a representative of several hundred books that we um, have ordered free books. Some of it was from the Usborne Book Fair that y'all did. Um, and the plan was to distribute them at junior luncheon at, um, at convention. So um, Candace has graciously agreed to let us do it at, uh, at fall board. So uh, each table, someone from the table at junior uh, luncheon will be able to take home about 18 books per table for your club to donate. So that yeah. is um, all coming back to you from, um, from the money raised um, through the remittance form for Book Heroes. So thank you all so much for that. Really, really appreciate it. And I go back to my cool background now. That's really awesome. It was such a great project and I know everybody um, got involved in doing that and um, we all became book heroes because I saw so many pictures of clubs that handed out books to little kids, big kids, and um, it really was a great project and what a great idea. When I was in Belize, they had a little library outside the ice cream shop. So um, it's kind of cool when you're out and about, you actually see one and you know what it's all about. And we actually left a book in Belize. We had a couple of books in yeah. the car and we actually put some in there. So very, very cool. Don't forget to register for that so that that drawing can yes. be done and you might win a little free library. Delivered delivered to your door. Yes. So our other special guest is here, Sharon. I'll go okay. let her in. I will let her in now. We have invited a special guest that is no stranger to any of you. So we've asked her to, to just kind of uh, come in and join us a little bit. Oh, and there she is. Hi, Cheryl. Cheryl's connecting to audio. So our special guest, our special, another special guest for tonight is Cheryl Moulter. Hi, and Cheryl. She, Welcome. We're she, recording. Yeah, and there she is. Hey, Cheryl. Oh, I, was just, I was just introducing you. I said you were a special, special guest because we had a special guest before. Oh, but okay. um, I wanted to introduce Cheryl Moulter, who is our state meetings chairman. And um, pretty much I have to tell you, she's um, on the front line, the back line, in the kitchen, in the lobby for any event that GFWC Florida has had for several administrations. And I just wanted to... Um, have her come on. Shannon and I both talked about it because there's been questions about, you know, conventions and what do we do and how we do it. So we just wanted her just to spend a few minutes just to tell you um, about some of the decisions that were made and, and uh, things going forward. So i um, glad to have you, Cheryl, where you work in today because Cheryl works at a school. So they haven't yeah. shut down. We're not back in the physical building, but I'm working from home. I have work. Oh, okay. The principal right. keeps sending me projects. <laughs> so I'm working from home. Working from home? Yep. Well, that's okay. All right. So just go ahead and just fill us in just on a few things. I mean, we didn't really give her a topic other than just to tell us a little bit about hotels and the Rosen and just some things like that. Okay. Well, I know quite a few people were very concerned that we were taking so long to make a decision. And um, I have to tell you, I was on the phone or through email with Sharon and the Rosen every day. Um, and we sign our contracts uh, for two, uh, four meetings at a time. So one, one president signs for the next administration. So that would be four meetings. Um, the Rosen has been very kind to us. I've negotiated in the last couple of years. They've brought down our room rate. They've brought down our meal rate. And I know even though you ladies may think that the meal rates are high, they are, but the Rosen has really worked with us to give us lunch prices and to give us the best that they can give us. There is a 23% tip charge that's add on to every meal yes. that we do for the people who set up, for the people who serve, for the people who clean up, because obviously they have to make a living some kind of way. So that gets charged on there. Um, the Rosen is very kind with us. For an example, the arts and crafts contest that we have, um, we probably use about 50 tables and they do not charge us for one table. Okay. Um, I know that that doesn't help your pocketbook, but it definitely helps the Federation pocketbook. And if we were going to have to absorb those costs, then we would be um, having to send them off to use in some kind of way the registration would have to go up or, or something. Something would have to happen. Um, many organizations, I've done a lot of research. 
Many organizations charge a hundred plus dollars for registration. registration. We're very reasonable on our registration. Um, and the main thing too is please make sure you go through the hotel to book your room because they count our room count. We're, we're supposed to meet a spe specific room count. And if we don't, um, then we wind up having to pay for some of that. So um, there's a lot of things that go into it. They were very, very courteous and acceptable to my um, request that we cancel with no penalty because they really didn't have to, um, but they did. And so we're very excited to be at the Rosen. Um, I know maybe some of you get tired of being at the Rosen, but it is such a great place specifically for me to have to work with the crew yes. and, and everybody who calls us family and everybody who knows us by name and everybody who looks forward to us coming there. Yeah, we have some, I know I have a couple of favorite waitresses um, that actually serve only our banquets. Um, many of them have worked for Mr. Rosen for over 25 years, but they come back to service um, our banquets and work our events because they know us and we have a relationship with them. The guy that unloads the car, the valet, he's been there for uh, over 25 years that I know. So the commitment that the Rosen um, has to us um, does help us to make it easier when we have to make des tough decisions like we have had to make. And um, I know that Mr. Rosen is a great philanthropist. He works in the community and does support and just um, is committed to keeping his hotels open because he was one of the last hotels to close Shingle Creek, um, but he did keep his other hotels open over in Orlando. And that was huge when the Hilton across the street closed right away. So the commitment that he has, and, and we all had such a great relationship with Mike Van Buskirk that retired and um, they brought Harold Donnelly in and Harold has fit right in and, and worked alongside of us. And that relationship that Cheryl has with the staff, if it comes down to booking, paying the bill, um, we need more napkins, we need more chairs, whatever we need, she knows who to go to and they, they take care of all of that for us. So um, we just wanted Cheryl to come on and just tell you a little bit about how important it is um, that you have a relationship with a hotel or with a convention center because um, pretty much anything that we need, they pretty much give it to us or give it to us at a discounted cost because we have been going there for such a long time. So Shannon, I don't know if you have anything to add. Well, I just um, want to thank Cheryl for being one of my advisors, which is huge. Um, it's a, it's a, I kind of get to choose my mentors and Cheryl is definitely one of them. And, and, uh, I just love you much. And I hope you know how much you are appreciated, not just by us, but by, um, uh, by the entire GFWC Florida Federation. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. And I appreciate your commitment. I, um, followed you, um, when we were directors and, um, I just wanted you to know that I appreciate your friendship. Um, even when I get a little stressed, uh, what color napkins, what color tablecloths, and I'm like, really just choose something. And, and um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on that you guys have no idea where the podium's gonna be, is the flag up, are the lights on, does the microphone work, all that stuff that when you walk into those lunches or to those ballrooms, that it is set up and ready to go. And uh, Cheryl's got a mean uh, yellow legal pad that I tell you, she's got all her notes on and she can go right to everything. She knows right where it is. And so that we're grateful. So Cheryl, another reason that we wanted to have you on is that tonight I'm presenting you with the Gold Star President's Award. Oh. And I'm giving this to you as the, the bestest, the uh, most outstanding uh, chairman because you have certainly served me well over the past two years and served our federation just uh, I, I just, I, I look at the end of the table and you're not there, but I look out on the floor and I see what you're doing. You're out taking care of business. And GFWC Florida is very, very um, grateful to you for what you've done, especially during this pandemic. And- uh, <laughs> Scary times. Yeah. And is your husband still stuck in the Turks? My husband is stuck. I talked to him on Sunday and um, the airport has been closed since- right. um, like March the 15th and they keep extending when they're going to open it. So yeah, even yeah. if he wanted to get off, he can't unless he starts swimming. Yeah. Um, he probably wouldn't mind being stuck in the Turks, but not during a pandemic. So, no. um, I actually know they have no, they have no cases there. Oh, nobody, okay. can, no, yeah. nobody cool. can go in and nobody can come out. So yeah. 
they um but they have no cases so well um you know that's that's, that's kind of lonely is. though so but we just wanted to um have you come on and just uh just let you know how much we appreciate you how grateful we are for you for your friendship your leadership your support you. and um I know that you have no rest because going forward, I know that you're also serving um, in the next administration as the state meetings chairman and you've already started working on that. And um, Cheryl also does JASM, summer planning. Any event that GFWC gets together, she's the person that negotiates um, with the hotels when we tell her the needs. So um, again, outstanding gold star award um, president's award to you Cheryl for your outstanding service and uh, we'll make sure we get the certificate to you at fall board we'll catch you and take a picture and give you your gold star trophy at that time well thank so, you I'll be I'll be there oh um, yeah, yeah we'll be there I want to get the head table you might have to look for me I'll be down oh with, that's um, right yes. that's right it has yeah. been. It she's gonna has be been, causing right? problems at the past <laughs> president's table that's where she's that's gonna right. be that's right yeah. hey, if I could just say one thing as well yeah. it's quite thank you very much that is quite an honor because it's one of those jobs that's like a behind the scenes job that people don't really know and i've had so many ladies come up and say oh you do such a great job and everything's so smooth and so this that and the other and i say then i know i'm doing a good job because if you think it's smooth then yeah. i'm glad to hear that because it wasn't but right. but i know that and as long as nobody else knows that then i'm doing my job yeah. and i appreciate the recognition thank you so much for that um i look forward to fall board and southern region we're hosting southern region in 2021 yes and um so i'm already set for that got things going so thank Great. you guys for everything well thank we you we love you and um i'm just i thank you for your friendship and um keeping me calm um <laughs> at those at those times of stress um it's greatly appreciated i appreciate it very much Thank you. We, um, we see you. We see everything you do yes. and we appreciate Thanks. you. Yes. Thanks. And, Thanks guys. And we love you. And I hope to, I hope to hug up all on you soon. Yeah. yeah right. And then, and then dance. Elbows. We'll elbows. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll go all dance. Right. We'll go dancing later. There you're we good, go. You're a good dancer. Yeah. Thanks Cheryl. Thanks for Thanks, joining guys. us. Bye. Okay. Yeah. Bye. 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 So um, like Cheryl said, we're just so, um, so blessed to be a part of the Rosen family. And like she said, it's, it, there's a lot of hotels in Orlando, a lot of things out there, but um, we've looked at prices. We've looked at what they do, microphones, they charge you, tables, they charge you, table covering. So um, I wish that I could give Cheryl more than a golden star because she truly has, um, has earned it in this last couple of months back and forth with the communication with the Rosen. So thank you very much, Cheryl Moulter. Okay. Yes, absolutely. So now we've got a few more awards that we've saved to the very end because they're very special. Not that the others weren't special, but we have some um, special awards that we want to share with you and then some other figures and some other announcements. So are you up first, Shannon, or am I? Um, I, I did my category award, so okay. you are next, my dear okay, so, Madam President. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and announce our President Project Award winners. And these um, are under the chairmanship of Mary Jacobs, who is the President's Project Chairman. And uh, so I'll go ahead and announce those to you. And remember, we're just announcing the first place winners. The uh, Category 1, GFWC Women's Club of the Villages. Category two, GFWC Women's Club of Lake Wales. Mm -hmm. Category three, GFWC Women's Club of Wilaka. Wilaka. Category four, GFWC Gulf Coast Women's Club. Right. And category five, GFWC Tampa Women's Club. So congratulations to all of you for being outstanding in the area of President's Project. I am uh, so proud of each one of you. I also wanted to just uh, tell you a little bit about um, the You Make Me Smile. Many of you know that we have um, Smile Squad members, one in each district, and um, they have worked so hard to sell the golden tickets, and I do have the barrel with me tonight, so I will take the time to show that to you. It's pretty full, and um, so I just wanted to recognize the Smile Squad chairman and their district. So District 1, Maureen Taylor who went on the Smile Across the Seas cruise with us and she brought 10 of her family members. We had such a great time with them. 
District That's two, Ron, yes, District two, Rhonda Alderman. District three, Suzanne Taylor. District four, Janie Aid, and she had some help from Nancy Ware. I know that Nancy did some 50-50s and some fundraising in District four, and I just wanted to give her a shout out as well. District five, Sally Milner and Vicki Cox, who took over when um, Charlene Carruth was not able to stay um, in as the chairman with Anita Jenkins. So they have taken over um, the actual President's Project fundraising, and they're from District 5. District 6, Julia George. District 7, Cheryl Van Buren. District 8, Pat Keel and Karen Grigsby. District 9, Edie Gabbard. District 10, Jerry Kodecker. District 11, Virginia Yermoli. District 12, Katherine Gallagher, who you know went on a Operation Smile trip. And District 13, Charlotte Delu, And District 14, Laura Connolly. So I just wanna again, thanks Mary Jacobs as my chairman, Jerry Lynn Cancel as my co-chairman. Um, Mary Jacobs has been on 20 Operation Smile trips. So she was the perfect choice to go ahead and get the information out on that. I also want to do a shout out to Charlene Carruth and Anita Jenkins and the thing that I can think of is they used to begin with their singing and then they would sing more and and they would say when you're smiling the whole world is smiles the whole world smiles with you so I just wanted to do a shout out to them as well um, a couple of more figures and then um, I'll give it back over to Shannon I know that she has some other things too so um, some figures that I'll tell you but again you don't need to write them down because they will be on the website but I wanted to give you some of our reporting figures for 2019 so with 8,407 members GFWC has 187 clubs and within those clubs we were able to do 112,889 projects the volunteer hours was 1,228,000 volunteer hours. Wow. In-kind donations, 1,275,000 in in-kind donations. And dollars donated, GFWC Florida donated $1,463,000. And um, that's just 2019. So you could go back to some of the previous information and pull up those 2018 totals and find out what we did. Um, ESO, we um, read four, we read for 4,410 hours, no, I'm sorry, we read 4,410 books, I'm sorry, that sounds more like and it. we read over 99,000 hours. Now, I'm sure that if it would have been done in, the, in March of this year, that probably <laughs> would have doubled because there's a lot of reading going on out there. And a shout out to GFWC Rotunda West Women's Club. Their members read 2,086 books. One club read that wow. many books. So that's pretty exciting. Um, also want to do a shout out to Lucille Casey, who is our Jenny Award winner for Florida. She was actually recognized and went on to Southern Region and is actually selected with another uh, winner to go on to GFWC. Uh, she will be featured in one of the upcoming Club Woman magazines, but Clearwater Community Women's Club should be so proud of Lucille Casey as we are. As she's our representative for the Jenny June Award going forward. Um, I also wanted to just do a little thank you to Jerry Lynn for our days of service. Many of you know for very special arts, we did the mosaic the first year of my administration, and then the second year we did the Fisher House. And um, just some hands-on projects that were done there. And how can we forget the Everglades Eagles? All those eagles that we um, had in the car that Elizabeth Fisher drove up and down the state of Florida and delivered them. <laughs> she did. And then one day she drove from Miami to Fernandina and then she drove back home. Then when she was at our state meeting, her daughter had a baby and she turned and she drove back. So all those wonderful eagles that we actually adopted and um, actually um, had sponsors for, um, I know that each dollar was matched for the signage for the Everglades, and I'm just grateful for that. That was one of those projects that when she called me, I said, Elizabeth, there is no way that we're going to be able to <laughs> have people buy an eagle, paint an eagle, and then get a sponsor for it. But it's one of those things, never say never, because mm -hmm. it has made a huge difference in the signage and the awareness of the Everglades. So um, just wanted to just, just throw a few other projects out there that were reported in some of those special areas. Big, big numbers that we're sharing Big here. numbers. Very big. So uh, you're seeing this, I don't think we said this at the beginning, you're oh. seeing this on Friday night, May 15th, when we would have been 
uh, starting our annual convention. And so I know y'all are as disappointed as we are that we're not together physically in Orlando, but I hope that y'all have enjoyed um, our plan B that we have come up with and the, um, the, uh, the Zoom casts that we learned how to do so that we could, uh, <laughs> so that we could bring y'all, bring you awards. And um, I haven't heard one critique and there were many, 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 many opportunities to do so. So thank y'all for being so supportive and kind about. Uh, I think those us. went to spam. Yeah, yeah, that's spam. right. Or um, <laughs> thank you, I'll take that into consideration. Uh, so Sharon and I uh, just wanted a little bit of an opportunity to share a little bit with you that we would have shared um, at convention. And so um, I uh, have got some words for juniors and um, for all of GFWC Florida. Uh, so bear with me. What an honor it has been to serve as GFWC Florida Director of Junior Clubs. During this administration, 573 juniors in 30 clubs reported 3,257 projects and over 70,000 volunteer hours. Juniors donated over $244,000 in cash donations and over $220,000 of in-kind donations. We revitalized ESO in Florida. We started an online book club. We chartered a new juniors club and we expanded our social media presence. I visited 25 of our junior clubs in the last two years and I had three more club meetings on my calendar before everything was canceled on everyone's calendar. To those clubs that I missed, I hope you'll invite Candace to come visit you when you are able to meet again. Thank you, GFWC Florida, for being such incredible book heroes. My director's project sought to donate books to children who might, might, might not have any at home. And it was, to say the least, enthusiastically embraced by many GFWC Florida clubs. And y'all have read these numbers, but they bear repeating. Are you ready for this? My goal for 2018-2020 was 20,000 books. In 2018, Book Heroes donated 31,796 books. So that Yay. was the second half of 2018. The number reported in 2019 is an incredible 73,036 books. This gives us a combined two-year total of 104,832 wow. Book Heroes books donated and distributed by you, GFWC Florida Club Women. This blows me away. Wow. Thank you so much for your support of the Book Heroes Project. And remember, there is still a need. 61% of low-income homes have zero books in them, according to the U.S. Department of Education. Two-thirds of the achievement gap between higher and lower income youth can be explained by unequal access to books. And the only behavior measure that significantly correlates with reading scores is the number of books in the home. So we've, we've made a good start, but we're not done. There's still a lot of work to do. Of course, the huge number of donated books that I read only reflects reporting from 2018 and 2019. So do report your books donated in 2020. Yes. Book Heroes will continue to be a GFWC Florida project, so keep it up. Candace will have her own director's project that I encourage you to support, and you can continue to report Book Heroes projects under education. I'd like to thank everyone who served on the Junior Planning Committee for your time and devotion. Thank you to the amazing Junior Executive Committee for your countless hours helping to make GFW, the GFWC Florida Junior Organization the best it can be. Thank you to my steadfast advisors and to the executive committee for being so easy to work with and caring so much about our club members. Thank you to GFWC Florida President Sharon Oliphant. Why, why am I bothering you with your last name? Thanks to this lady for always including me and supporting me and for bringing the fun and the beverages. <laughs> Above all, I want to thank every one of you for your membership in your club and GFWC Florida. You juggle work and families and club commitments because you are passionate about making a difference in your community. I love this organization and the sisterhood it fosters as we all work together to serve GFWC Florida. Women's club members, juniors, juniorettes, we are all club women and we exemplify unity and diversity. It was such fun to travel the state visiting all 14 districts on tour with Sharon seeing firsthand the work and sisterhood of this fierce, accomplished group of women. I am so proud to have represented all GFWC Florida club women. Thank you for trusting me to serve you. It's been an honor and a blessing and an absolute joy. 
I hope we will continue to love and encourage and show grace to one another in our endeavors as clubs and volunteer women. I hope we will read the collect frequently and try to live by it. And I hope we will continue to live each day trying to accomplish something, not merely to exist. Go juniors, go GFWC Florida. Yay! Yay, I didn't cry, but uh, we're not done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think that's why she wanted to go first because, you know, she knows what I'm, yeah. Oh no, Madam President, I just wanted to defer to you. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Well, I do have one other um, final award that I need to do before I go into my closing remarks, and that is the You Make Me Smile Award. And I did bring the drum with all the tickets, and I have to tell you that this is really full. It's hard to see, but there's a lot of tickets in there. And I put a word out today to the Smile Squad, and there's uh, we have had 2,500 tickets, and there's probably less than 50 in the state left. But um, I already have um, some that need to be accounted for. But the You Make Me Smile Awards are for the top club that actually um, donated through GFWC Florida. Now, I know that many of you have mailed blankets and things like that, and that's included in our totals. However, this is cash funds that were actually um, sent to GFWC Florida. And I'm happy to tell you that in second place, GFWC Tampa Women's Club receives a Ooh. You Make Me Smile Award. And then I will tell you that our first place winner, which is, is just wait until you hear the figures, goes to the GFWC Junior Women's Club of Fernandina Beach. They raised $10,200 alone in 2019. So combined last year with their donation this year, one club, the Junior Women's Club of Fernandina Beach, mm. made a donation of $14,200 to Operation Smile. This and I, 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 I know. Amazing. Go it juniors. Is, it is amazing. And I will tell you that, you know, all across the state, large clubs, small clubs, whatever clubs you are, every dollar counts and every dollar makes a difference. Um, the Florida Georgia Bash is the event that the Junior Women's Club put on. And um, they're having to look for a bigger venue for next year. So um, oh, cool. to the Fernandina Juniors, um, Pam Graves, and all of you ladies, I am so, so grateful and humbled for all the work that you did alongside of all of our um, members in Florida. Because like I said, every dollar, every dollar amount counts. So you are the top winner for the You Make Me Smile Award. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and give you some figures. And um, our Operation Smile mission trip will occur in 2021. We will draw the golden tickets Friday night at Fall Board, September 25th. And um, we will be presenting a final check. It might be different than this because we still do have some funds coming in. I was just getting a text message that someone was asking me where to send a check. So um, the books close May 31st, but Operation Smile is an ongoing project. So um, just because, like Shannon said, you know, at the end of this administration, please continue to support going forward that Operation Smile is still a, um, a program that GFWC works with. So in 2018, GFWC Florida, donated in cash $127,507.55. In 2018, and I don't have the totals for 2019, but we did $30,905 $30, just in goods. Those were the blankets wow. and the gowns and the things that you sent. So our total so far in 2019 will be $140,000 for Operation Smile, which I have, I have goosebumps. Our grand total right now is over $260,000 for Operation Smile. So I have to tell you that my heart is full because the heart full of smiles that you guys did through the fundraising and through everything that you did um, helped me to reach a lofty goal that um, I came up with and then my husband goes, go a little higher. And I was like, oh, I just don't know. And I'm glad that I did because we have still surpassed that goal with over $260,000 right now that is going to Operation Smile. 
So um, there's still stuff coming in, so keep it coming, and uh, we'll make a huge donation to Operation Smile to fully fund a mission trip. No cost to Operation Smile. We will fully fund that trip for our members that will draw the golden tickets on that Friday night. So Fantastic. that's so, I know, it's so that's exciting. That's amazing. And, and just um, an amazing. So um, Shannon had hers in a speech. I have mine like in one-liners because um, I didn't want to do a lot of names because you always forget someone if you do names. Like, remember, I forgot my husband when um, I was being installed. So I want to make sure that um, I don't forget anyone. So I did make um, just some, some little notes here. And um, I just wanted to get started to let you all know that this is not a name, this is not a complete list because some each one of you had touched me in so many different ways that in looking through pictures the memories just bring back smiles and I've been posting some of those um, on our Facebook page and um, so I'll just go ahead and just 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 read a few little one-liners so I first want to thank the 2018 2020 executive committee who through many challenges this past administration have supported me and st stood beside me. One of my goals as president was to update policies, procedures, manuals, bylaws, and standing rules. And I have done that with this group. Mm -hmm. And these ladies have stood beside me. And I'm grateful for the laughs, the tears, the encouragement, and the accomplishments. And I thank each one of you. I um, look forward to Diane and Candace going forward. And I hope that they'll get as much support as Shannon and I did. Congratulations to Joyce Johnston, who will actually serve as our Southern Region Vice President. And uh, we know that we will see her in Alabama when she is taking on that role. A special shout out to Jolie Frankfurt, who will be um, coming in as a candidate for secretary for GFWC. And I'm disappointed, Jolie, that Shannon and I won't be able to walk you in for that special occasion, but you know that we are here for you and we support you in this endeavor and we're so very proud of you. To my Southern sisters, you know who you are. We were robbed. But we were not forgotten. So remember the boom shakalaka that the uh, Southern sisters will always stay together. And I thank each one of you for your friendship and your leadership. Thankful for my friends that I can call and vent when things are going tough. And I can't tell you who their names are just because. Thank you to past presidents and the past directors. The legacy of your service and your commitment to this organization has helped me to do my very best and strive to be like many of you. One of the behind the scenes heroes, Allie Rhines, who never gets to finish her meal and she's <laughs> running back and forth. She doesn't get to really catch up on table talk because she's running the PowerPoint or fixing something. And she creates a beautiful presentation when I send her pictures and just kind of point and say, I want this there and this here. She always makes it look good. So Allie, I just want to thank you for that. As Shannon said, I want to thank the junior executive committee. You've made me laugh. You've helped me to have a good time and uh, shown the support to Shannon and for that I'm grateful. District directors, junior district directors, all of the chairman and the committee members, thanks for holding our clubs together and the reporting process going forward because we are certainly a team. My president's assistant, Cheryl Benton, thanks for trying very hard to make me listen to where I'm supposed to go. <laughs> I know that was one of the hardest jobs ever, but you've done it. Um, just making me laugh, making me look good, and I'm just grateful for you, Cheryl Benton. Mary Powell, you're very special to me, and I appreciate you always thinking of me because you always will call or email and say, I was just thinking about you, and I appreciate that. The three cruises that we went on, what can I say? You guys know my heart. I love to cruise. So the District 13 cruise, the District 8 cruise, and the Smiles on the Sea cruise. Thank you for letting me go to Belize and install two presidents of international clubs in Belize and Belma Pond. What an exciting time that was. Charlene Carruth, I think of you often because you think of me every day. Your smile and voice can light up a room. Your random texts, random pictures make me crack up and it came right when I needed it. And the reason I chose Operation Smile was because of you. The time that we served together, you told me everybody deserves a smile and Operation Smile was the place that I needed to go. My keychain with the picture of my dad is next to my bed, and it reminds me of him. To my club, uh, Seminole Junior Women's Club, the Pinellas Seminole Club, and to the North Pinellas Women's Club, to Virginia Papadopoulos and Anita Lacane, we couldn't have done this without you. District 14, you are our heartbeat, and we're so grateful for everything that you've done for us. The members of GFWC Florida, 
there is just no way we could thank you for everything that you have done because I'm telling you, as we've traveled across the state or we've encountered things in our lives, you have been there for us. And um, I know that we will be together soon. And if it's a high five or a kiss across the room, know that we love you. I also would like to uh, just have just some fond memories of Marty Henderson, Francis Frost, Carolyn Pfeiffer, Jackie Pierce, and one of the best, Judy Lutz. I miss you. To my husband and my family, there's no way you could do this by yourself because it is a village. The commitment and hard work for GFWC Florida that I have been doing for 31 years before I served as your state president. My family has lived it every day, the heartaches, the joys, the sleepless nights, the surprises, the smiles, every laugh, I am beyond grateful. And here's where I'll cry, to Shannon, and to Edwin, and to her mom. We have become family, and I am so grateful for our date nights. We will still have those, but most of all, I'm just so grateful for your friendship. This is a tough road, this is a tough job, and there's days that I couldn't have done it without your encouragement, so I thank you for that. And I also wanted to let you all know that I am so proud of our incoming administration. They have worked hard to get where they are, and we know that in the days to come, they will encounter many of the things that we have encountered, but hopefully not a pandemic. But we know that, we know that we are here to encourage them and to support them because the best of the Federation needs to be what's closest to all of us. So I ask that you continue to support your executive committee, your junior executive committee, and those that are serving in leadership roles because our federation is the best. GFWC Florida has so much to be proud of and so much to be grateful for. And that is because of members like you. So Shannon and I have um, served alongside of each other. We've become really good friends. We prayed for each other. We've encouraged each other. And I'm telling you that this is the difference in GFWC Florida. So Absolutely. that's all that I have. Yeah. I don't have anything else. So our friends and our members, uh, we thank you. Uh, hug your family members tonight. Tell them that you love them. And uh, we will get through this, I promise you. And we will be stronger and better than ever before. Yep. And um, thank you for allowing me to serve as your state president. It has been a humbling and honoring experience. I'm gonna give Sharon a second to collect herself here. As you see, we love each other. We love GFWC Florida. That's nothing new. Thanks for letting us rattle on for a while. Um, so you're going to see this Friday night, the 15th, uh, when we would have been uh, gathering for convention. Uh, know how much we love you. Um, we will be uh, back with you briefly uh, after the ballots have been collected for, uh, counted for election. We will uh, um, let everybody know um, the results of the election uh, on the 17th or 18th, 17th. of yes. May. Uh -huh. um, and then we've got one more Zoom episode for you where uh, Sharon and I will be introducing your new president and director, Diane and Candace, and then um, they'll be sharing with you uh, their projects and their vision and uh, giving you an update of what's going forward. So there's one more Zoomcast yep. um, to look forward to for that. But um, thanks for being with us tonight and for the last uh, five weeks as we've shared with y'all and uh, just know how much we love y'all. And as we've said in every one, um, in every uh, session that we've done, the list of every um, every award that we've given will be um, available on the website. Hopefully you've been seeing that as the weeks have gone by that we've posted the new list. So um, so thanks for listening to us tonight. We love y'all and you'll hear from us uh, shortly with your election results. I love you, Luca. Mimi's here for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. Love y'all.